one problem we can look at to see how Taylor polynomials work is to use a Taylor polynomial to approximate the values of a function. Uh, one of the reasons this might be useful is that polynomial arithmetic is very easy to execute um, both paper with paper and pencil and also for computers. Um, and in this way, we can, um, we can define some of these transcendental functions like sine, cosine, log, things that are not polynomial uh, by just executing polynomial um, steps. So, um, so let's rebuild the um, fourth degree polynomial for cosine centered at zero. And we'll see how we might use that to estimate the value of cosine at some value near zero. So I'll, I'll estimate um, cosine of one, one radian. Uh, this was what our table looked like uh, from before. Our, um, we know that our center, oops, our center here is our center here is at zero. So I need cosine of zero, which is one. I need negative sine of zero, which is zero. Negative cosine of zero is negative one and zero and one. So remember that second row came from computing the formulas for the derivatives, so cosine, and then I'm just evaluating them at my center. And so using those as coefficients, uh, I was able to build uh, on the last, um, the last set of the last video, uh, we were able to build this fourth degree polynomial. And don't forget that these numbers are the, they're the numerators of these, of these fractions. Um, but notice how easy it is. Uh, so if we have a polynomial near zero, we would say that uh, the fourth degree polynomial is approximately the same as cosine, as long as we're take, talking about x is near zero. And there's a whole bunch of stuff loaded in there that we'll talk about next time. First of all, what does this approximately mean? And what do we mean by near? Those are two things we still will uh, need to uh, figure out. But anyway, so in this particular case, P4 of one, the polynomial at one should be about the same as cosine of one. And this is why we, we like this kind of um, estimate, because plugging one into the polynomial is super easy. Just plugging one in for x in the polynomial would give us this. And so that is one minus a half plus one over 24. And that's just 13 out of 20 over 24. So 13 over 24 um, is a good approximation of cosine of one. And I put that in my calculator. It's 0.455416 repeating. Um, the um, since that's approximating cosine of one, and we do have lots of ways to compute cosine of one, um, our calculator will do it. And of course, the calculator is not doing it exactly. The calculator is just doing it using polynomial steps and uh, in a way that gives us at least. Um, 11 or 12 good decimal places. But if we ask our calculator, what is the difference between cosine of one and this number that I just computed, and we always will measure uh, the error as absolute value, um, that ends up being 0 0.00136. So 13 over 24 is actually pretty close to the real value of cosine of one. All right, let's see it again uh, with um, a function that we did not look at last time, and that's the square root function. And so for, to have some more practice at finding the Taylor polynomial, I encourage you to, to pause the video here and, uh, and first of all, verify that um, I got all these right as my derivatives, starting with x to the 1 half. Um, and then secondly, for each of those um, derivative formulas, we need to evaluate them at uh, a equals 16. So the value I'm plugging into all these derivatives um, is the number 16. So uh, go ahead and pause the video and, and see if you can work out what those numbers are, and then come back and I'll go through it. So um, when we're putting 16 in, um, obviously square root of 16 is 4. That's why we're, we're using 16, because we could, it's easy to evaluate um, the square root function at 16. Uh, 1 half times 16 to the minus 1 half. Uh, 16 to the minus 1 half is going to be 1 over the square root of 16, so 1 fourth. So a half times a fourth is 1 eighth. I'll have negative 1 fourth 
16 to the negative 3 halves. And now it starts to get a little dicey. Uh, again, 16 to the 1 half is 4. And so 16 to the 3 halves will be 64. So there's 4 cubed. And this is negative 3 halves, so it'll be 1 over 64. So this is going to be negative 1 fourth times 1 over 64. So negative 1 over 256. And finally, uh, this guy is going to have a pretty big denominator. I'll have, um, so this will be 3 eighths and 16 to the minus 5 halves. That'll be um, 4 to the 5th, which is 1,012, uh, then up to the negative 1. So 1 over 1,000, I'm sorry, 1,024, not 1,012. Um, so 16 to the minus 5 halves is 1,024, um, whatever that is. So when we build the polynomial, remember those, uh, those guys, numbers we figured out, those are the coefficients in the, in the polynomial. So in my polynomial, I'll have 4 over um, 0 factorial, and then I'll have plus 1 eighth over 1 factorial times x minus 16 to the first. And then I'll have minus 1 over 256 divided by 2 factorial times x minus 16 squared. So I'm going to have to erase some of this. And then finally, um, plus, and now I'm going to have to have this awful looking thing, this 3 eighths times 1 over 10, 1024 divided by 3 factorial x minus 16 cubed. So there's a lot of compound fractions that, that, that could be resolved, but that's the polynomial. Uh, again, this polynomial is an approximation, so that polynomial is approximately the same as the square root of x as long as x is near 16. So, for example, these two things, uh, plugging 18 in for x, should be the same whether I'm plugging in 18 into the polynomial or plugging 18 uh, into the square root function. Uh, so now I need to plug 18 into my polynomial that I have here. So I'll have 4, remember 0 factorial is 1, so 4 over 1 plus 1 eighth, um, 18 minus 16 to the first, minus, I have 1 over 256 divided by 2, so that's 1 over 512, 18 minus 16 squared. And here I have, um, let me get this thing now, so this will be 6 down here, and that'll cancel, the one of the 3s will cancel with that. And so I'm going to end up with 1 over, I wrote this down somewhere, oh yeah, 16384. That is beyond my ability to, um, that's uh, 10 to the, I'm oh, sorry, 2 to 2 to the 14th power. So I do not know that one off the top of my head. Um, times this, and uh, we can resolve the fractions. Um, if you were doing this with Mathematica, wouldn't surprise you to know that you can get the fractions exactly, but uh, but surely you're just using a calculator, and you'll have um, 4.24268. So that's going to be the um, approximation of the square root of 18, and if we really figure out the difference between the square root of 18 and the polynomial at 18, for real, in absolute value. Uh, again, this is what we're saying are close. P3 of 18 and the square root of 18 are close. And so this calculation here is the um, absolute error. How far apart are they? Um, if I do this on a calculator, I get um, 0 0.000. Looks like one more 0, 0.035. So, um, so this fraction that we found from plugging 18 into the polynomial is um, is very close to the to the real value of the square root of 18.